The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day. Animal Welfare Sentencing Bill, second reading. Chris Loder. I beg to move that the Animal Welfare Sentencing Bill be read for a second time. Madam Deputy Speaker, I should like to declare that I am a tenant beef farmer's son and a former member of the National Farmers Union, and can I also refer the House to the Members' Register. Madam Deputy Speaker, I am delighted to sponsor this bill. It is one that means a great deal to so many people. It means an enormous amount to me, to my family who have been caring for animals for a hundred years on our farm, to many honourable members from across this House, and to the many impassioned campaigners from across the nation. If colleagues support me in my quest, we can today progress this much-awaited step forward on animal welfare, delivering another important commitment from this side of the House and helping to cement this country's place as a world leader in the care and protection of animals. I believe that every animal deserves a dignified life and that we should use our heads as well as our hearts when it comes to taking action on this issue. That is why I have decided to sponsor this important bill, inspired by the story of my own dog, a four-year-old Springer Spaniel, who I've named Poppy. Poppy was abandoned on a stormy night in January last year. She had been dumped at the top of a hill, miles from the nearest town or village, and it was at the roadside on that hilltop lane in my constituency that I found her whilst driving home. Poppy was in a bad state when I found her. She had clearly been mistreated. Her pads were red raw. There were cuts to her legs. She had nasty growths and she needed three teeth removed. And evidence suggested that shortly before I found her, she had given birth to a litter of puppies. My dad, being someone who has taken care of animals on our farm for his whole life, took her for the emergency veterinary care that she needed before bringing her home to live with my mum and dad on our farm. She now enjoys a wonderful new life as a member of the Loder family, exploring the green and pleasant land of my home in West Austin. Uh, I'd be delighted to give way. <coughs> and I, I too welcome his bill, but would he agree with me that the bill is, is very good but what we need is effective enforcement as well, because if we just have a bill that isn't actually enforced, then that doesn't take us any further forward. The uh, Honourable Gentleman for his intervention. And yes, I wholly agree with him, and I shall go on to address that a little bit later in my speech. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill amends the Animal Welfare Act 2006, which currently <laughs> sets out a maximum penalty of six months imprisonment and or unlimited fine for the most serious prevention of harm offences. We have in this country a legal and indeed a moral obligation to provide for the welfare needs of those animals which we keep and which should be safe in our care, whether that be pets or farm animals or in other captive environments. Under animal welfare law, the maximum custodial sentence for the most shocking animal cruelty offences is just six months imprisonment. And if you plead guilty to this crime at the first reasonable opportunity, the maximum sentence can be reduced to just four months. The UK is a nation of animal lovers. 44% of all households have a pet. And as the parliament of our great nation of animal lovers, it is right that we lead the way today in challenging this gross injustice. <coughs> a mere six months discourages no one, so we must establish, in the law of England and Wales, a much tougher maximum penalty. By increasing the penalty tenfold, we hope to suitably discourage the shocking behaviour that leads to the neglect and cruelty of animals. I should be delighted to give way. I thank the Honourable Friend for giving way and congratulate him on bringing forward this extremely important bill. Clearly prosecutions are only brought for really the most serious instances of animal cruelty, but does my little friend have an in indication of how many successful convictions at the moment result in an immediate custodial sentence? 
and how many of them don't even attract even the shortest uh, periods uh, behind bars. Can I thank my can, can I thank my honourable friend for his intervention? Uh, we have in excess of a million reports to the RSPCA of uh, difficulties uh, with animals or mistreatment of animals. It results in less than 100 ultimate prosecutions. So that, um, further to the Honourable Gentleman opposite's point a little earlier, does clearly indicate that the area of animal welfare needs much more attention, and particularly the enforcement point, as I shall also come on to a little later in my speech. I am pleased to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the Bill introduces one of the toughest punishments in the world and will bring us into line with the maximum penalties available in other Commonwealth countries, including those in Australia, Canada, New Zealand and India, which are all at five years' imprisonment. With this bill, we will lead the way in Europe on animal sentencing, where the average custodial sentence for animal welfare offences is currently just two years. It is a simple yet vital measure that will ensure perpetrators who harm an animal by, for example, causing unnecessary suffering, mutilation or poisoning face the full force of the law. That includes cases of systematic cruelty, like the deliberate, calculating and callous behaviour of ruthless gangs who, fight, who use dogfighting to fuel organised crime. This bill will mean that the courts will have sentences at their disposal, commensurate to the most serious of cases, so that the punishment fits the crime. This will send a clear signal. I'd be delighted to give way to the gentleman. Can I thank the honourable member for giving way and, like others, congratulate him on bringing forward this, uh, this very important bill. And he touches on a very important, which is the link between this, these crimes and other criminality. And shouldn't that really be reinforced by government to police forces and to prosecutors that those who break the law break the law and therefore they, there should be more, many more prosecutions because in many cases these people are also involved in other crime but also actually in, in cruelty particularly to children and to, uh, and, and to other human beings. Uh, can I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his, for his intervention? And yes, I wholly agree with him that those who break the law and those who carry out crimes, whatever that may be, uh, should, be fully, uh, should fully feel the full force of the law. And I'm delighted that the government is supportive of this bill and many other measures to tackle crime in this way to make sure we can tackle that very point. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill will mean that the courts will have sentences at their disposal, commensurate to the most serious of cases, so that the punishment fits the crime. This will send that clear signal to any potential offender that there is no place for animal cruelty in this country. I should be delighted to give way to my honourable Thank you very much indeed. Um, on behalf of the many constituents of South Derbyshire who have written to me about this bill, can I thank him for bringing it forward and thank the government for supporting it too. The idea that um, these sentences need to be commensurate to the crime and also, as honourable <coughs> members have mentioned, that um, they, actu they actually will be enforced this time round. Um, it's got a real big groundswell behind it. So again, I thank my honourable friend for bringing this bill forward. Can I thank my honourable friend very much indeed for intervention, I, and I wholly agree. And, and part of the reason for me wanting to progress this bill is that we very much deal with that issue where, as I've just articulated a little earlier, the fact that for over a million cases reported and less than 100 cases actually prosecuted is a great cause of concern, and I hope this bill will make progress in dealing with that area. Madam Deputy Speaker, there have been a number of recent cases involving serious and significant levels of animal cruelty in which the judges have indeed commented themselves that they would have imposed a higher penalty or custodial sentence had one been available. Only last month, a man was convicted of causing unnecessary suffering to his cat. He burned the cat in a hot oven, tried to flush her down the toilet, attempted to strangle her and threw her against the wall. He received an 18-week suspended sentence, was banned from keeping pets for 10 years, and was ordered to pay a mere £440 in cost. I hope members from across this House will agree with me that that is totally, absolutely unacceptable and that this bill will hopefully go to 
deal with this issue. Will my honourable friend give way? I should be delighted to give way to my honourable friend. Thank my honourable friend greatly. And uh, again, as has everybody this morning, I congratulate him on the on the bill that he's bringing forward. I suspect, and I'm not 100% certain, but I'm probably the only member in the House this morning that actually sits as a, a member of the judiciary, as a magistrate, sentencing. And I can tell you that when you face uh, a, a case like the one you've just identified, and I have on numerous occasions, they are some of the most harrowing and disturbing cases that magistrates deal with. But I also recognise the court of public opinion when those cases are reported in newspapers. And I've personally faced criticism from uh, constituents who feel that we've under-sentenced. Now, even when you're sentencing at the maximum uh, available at six months, uh, there is absolutely recognition in, in the community that these sentences need to go beyond it. So I say as a magistrate, and having spoken to many other magistrates, uh, we really do support this legislation. It's absolutely needed, and I'm delighted to see him bringing it forward. Yeah. Uh, can I uh, thank my honourable friend very much indeed for his contribution and intervention? And I wholly agree with him, because the example that I have just offered to the House and shared with the House is just one of countless examples of heinous animal cruelty that we see each and every year in this country and I want this bill not just to discourage that behaviour but to stop it. Well, my right honourable friend, <laughs> I should be delighted to give way to my honourable friend. I'm grateful to, to, to my honourable friend for, for giving way. He refers to that case he, and I imagine it's implicit in what he's saying that he believes that instead of a suspended sentence a sentence of immediate imprisonment should have been imposed. Yet, the explanatory notes in relation to the financial implications of this bill says that the increase in maximum penalties will not result in an increase in the number of offenders being sent to prison, implying that it wouldn't make a hate worth of difference to the case to which he's just been referring. Can I, as always, thank my uh, honourable friend for his, uh, his kind intervention and his uh, uh, contribution. Um, I'm afraid I don't agree entirely with my uh, honourable friend. Um, the evidence that we have seen from magistrates and others uh, make it very clear indeed that the ability, the tools they have in their toolbox to be able to deal with this matter is much limited. And I think part of the issue that we also see is that it is not a maximum of six months, is not indeed uh, any sort of discouragement. I mean, maybe to some, but I'm afraid it's clearly not, not working. Um, and, and I think the element of enforcement that has been made by uh, colleagues from across this House is one that is absolutely required. And I look forward going forward, because this is one component. This bill that I've put forward to the House today is one component of a suite of, uh, I like to think, legislative components that the government, and indeed I think my uh, honourable friend and neighbour from Tiverton and Honiton, uh, will look to progress in respect of animal sentience as well to deal with these very matters. I wonder if Honourable Friend would just give way um, one further I'm time. not going to just for the moment. I'm sorry, I need to make a little bit of progress and then I'll uh, uh, come back to my Honourable Friend in a moment. Every year, animal welfare charities such as Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, the RSPCA, the Kennel Club, Cats Protection and many others carry out important work to rescue and rehome animals. It is clear from the amount of work they have to do that we need to discourage these acts of cruelty in the first place, as I had just outlined. We, I should be delighted to give way to my, the Honourable Gentleman. Uh, on, on the point about discouraging uh, people from um, thinking about animal cruelty in the first place, disagree with me that we need to publicise and raise the awareness uh, of the maximum sentence, uh, hopefully once the bill is passed and put into law, so that that acts as a deterrent to stop people even thinking about committing cruelty to animals. Yeah, yeah. Can I thank very much the uh, Honourable Gentleman for his contribution and intervention? Yes, I wholly agree with him. And part of the reason why I myself feel so strongly that this bill needs to be put forward is that the, uh, I, I like to think the publicity and the support from the organisations, uh, those, those who specialise in animal care and look to take care of those animals, as I've just outlined, will indeed increase the publicity uh, of this very much more so. And I, I invite all members both here in this House today and not today and everybody watching on television to support the case and to make sure that this is indeed well known. We now have an opportunity, Madam Deputy Speaker, to deliver a strong message to animal abusers that their behaviour will no longer be tolerated. When this bill is passed, they can expect those tougher sentences to be received. 
The increase in the maximum penalty for animal cruelty will be the first increase for such offences in over 30 years. Interestingly, the increase on the, occasion, on the last occasion was made also by a private member's bill, by the then Honourable Member for Ealing North. Then the maximum penalty was just three months' imprisonment and a fine of just £1,000. Now, I know this House has many honourable members who have spoken up for animal welfare over the years, and I am sure we will continue to do so and do so again. I hope, with the support of honourable members across this House, we can see this bill reach the statute book and make a real difference by reducing the instances of animal cruelty, as indeed the honourable gentleman uh, highlighted. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, whilst this bill will go some way to correct the deep injustices of cruelty to animals across this country, there are many aspects of animal cruelty that this bill does not address. Honourable friends in this House, and indeed honourable members opposite, will I'm sure speak about other areas of priority uh, for animal welfare, pet theft, for example, or the right to keep family and pets together no, mo no matter what the accommodation arrangements. And I'd like to pay tribute to my honourable and very dear friends, the member for Ipswich and indeed uh, the member for Romford, who is not in this place uh, at the moment. And I should also say uh, I should uh, thank and very much appreciate the support and help of my honourable and dear friend, the member for Redcar, uh, for whom I do appreciate his kind concern and support uh, for this bill. Um, if you don't mind, as I've given way once already to the, to the Honourable Gentleman, I'd like to make a bit more progress, if that's all right. Madam Deputy Speaker, I particularly look forward to when the Government will introduce legislation on animal sentience as well, a matter that has given the EFRA Select Committee much cause for concern. And may I also pay tribute to the Chairman of the EFRA Select Committee, my Honourable Friend and Neighbour, the Member for Honiton and Tiverton, for his work and that of the fellow members of the committee present, especially my honourable friend, the member for Keithley. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, there are two areas of animal welfare concern that should be firmly on our list of priorities going forward as this nation's parliament. The first of these is live animal exports. It is disgraceful that our well-cared-for farm animals can be loaded onto a lorry and sent thousands of miles by land and sea to a destination in southern Europe. And if that is not bad enough, these poor animals go on to be slaughtered, not even in continental Europe, but in places such as Libya and Lebanon, as reported by the BBC a couple of weeks ago. And for those who believe that the National Farmers Union is on the side of animal welfare and that this government is not, I have just this to say. It is this Conservative government that wants to stop live animal exports. And who is it, Madam Deputy Speaker, that wants these live exports to continue? For our cows, and other animals to be subjected to a disgraceful level of care and slaughter thousands of miles away from the United Kingdom, it is the National Farmers Union. So today, I call upon honourable members in this place to ensure that this Parliament delivers the Conservative Manifesto pledge of stopping live animal exports. And let us remind ourselves how this pledge actually became possible. It, no, I'm not for a moment. It is because this Conservative Party is delivering the democratic will of the nation to leave the European Union, and it's that European Union that has demanded live animal exports be permitted for so long. And so to the thousands of people across the nation, whom the NFU have egged on to abuse my colleagues in this place, and say that they have no care for animal welfare standards, can I suggest, with the greatest of respect, that they go back to the National Farmers Union and demand that they, the NFU, 
Stop lobbying to continue these disgraceful live animal exports. And if anyone doesn't believe a farmer's son who stands here today about this, may I simply reference the Farmers Weekly, which in December 2019 ran with the headline, and I quote, NFU scheme aims to avert PM's ban on live exports. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is also high time that we address the barbaric act of non-stun slaughter of animals in this country. And let me just be clear on what I mean by non-stun slaughter. An animal fully alive with all its senses intact will be hung up by its hind legs, dangling in the air in the greatest of distress, that animal will have its throat slit and be left to bleed to death, hung up to die for minutes. For me, this is a matter of great national shame. And for those who say that this doesn't happen very often, or this is just a small issue, let me put this in perspective, if I may. There are millions of animals that are slaughtered in this way, in this country, every year. The latest figures from the Food Standards Agency show an estimated 91 million chickens per year are not stunned at slaughter. The Food Standards Agency also reported last year that a staggering 25% of all sheep that go for slaughter are not stunned. That's a quarter of all sheep. And I could go on, but I'm afraid the idea of a cow is so like those that my mum and dad and thousands of other small farmers in this country spend their lives taking care of, strung up and ending its life in this way is, I'm afraid, Madam Deputy Speaker, a little too much for a farmer's son like me to contemplate. We as a nation must face up to this issue, and I, for one, will be joining the RSPCA and the British Veterinary Association in calling for an end to non stun slaughter in this country, and I warmly encourage others, my honourable friends and members from across this House, to join me in doing the same. <coughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, the bill before us today is, however, a simple measure amounting to just two clauses. Clause 1 is the Bill's main clause. It outlines the mode of trial and maximum penalty for certain animal welfare offences. As I previously outlined under the Animal Welfare Act 2006, the maximum penalty in practice is currently six months and or an unlimited fine. This clause changes the maximum custodial sentence available for five key offences, and these five offences are in Section 4, causing unnecessary suffering to a protected animal. This offence has remained largely unchanged for over 100 years. It is the main animal cruelty offence for which around 800 people are successfully prosecuted each year, and mainly by the RSPCA. Section 5, carrying out a non-exempted mutilation. This prohibits certain procedures, such as castration and spaying, without suitable qualifications, experience or supervision. Section 6, the docking the tail of a dog except where permitted. Section 7, administering a poison to an animal. And Section 8, involvement in an animal fight. This includes dog fighting. This also includes not only organising and taking part in such events but also promoting them and possessing the instruments that may be used in those animal fights. Under this clause, the existing maximum penalty of six months will be retained if the offender is summarily convicted. However, offenders may now receive a higher penalty of up to five years imprisonment and or an unlimited fine if they are convicted by trial on indictment, essentially where the, court, the case is heard by the Crown Court. Clause 2 outlines that the bill will come into force two months after royal assent. The application of revised maximum penalties is not retrospective and does not apply to offences committed before the bill comes into force. The bill also specifies the short title of the bill. 
Clause 2 also provides for the bill to extend not just to England but to Wales as well. Madam Deputy Speaker, animal welfare is a fully devolved matter. However, in the case of this bill, the Welsh Government have confirmed that the new maximum penalty should also apply in Wales and the bill is drafted on this basis. The Welsh Government have kindly prepared a legislative consent motion so that this bill can indeed be extended and applied in Wales. I know that many have campaigned hard for increased animal welfare sentencing for a very long time. And today I would also like to take the opportunity to pay particular tribute to those honourable members who have consistently supported me, both past and present, and have pressed for this bill to be brought forward, and particularly to those who have taken the time to be here today. This bill and the proposals therein have received strong support across the House, and I am grateful particularly to opposition members, uh, particularly the Shadow Minister and the Shadow Secretary of State uh, for uh, the Environment for their continued uh, support with this bill. To my right honourable and learned friend, the member for North East Hertfordshire, for steering the Animal Welfare Service Animals Act 2019 so skillfully through this House, and to all those that supported my right honourable friend and campaigned for stronger sentencing for those who harm service animals, inspired by Police Dog Finn. We are completing the increased protection of service animals with this bill today. When the Animal Welfare Sentencing Bill is enacted, those who cause injury to a service animal will receive, finally, a proportionate penalty for their horrific actions. I should also like to pay tribute, Madam Deputy Speaker, and to thank the RSPCA, the oldest and largest animal welfare organisation in the world, which deals with cases of serious neglect, cruelty and violence against animals every single day. The RSPCA have campaigned tirelessly for adequate animal welfare sentencing and have been of great support to me in bringing forward this bill. To the many charities to which the British public is devoted, and who advocate tirelessly for animals. The Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, the Blue Cross, the Finns Law Campaign, the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and the Dogs Trust. And these are to name just a few, and I know there are so many more that I, don't, I have not listed today. These organisations have been incredibly effective in their support for an increase in the maximum penalties, and may I praise their tireless efforts. And also, finally, to the many individual members of the public whose love for animals has helped us to get here today, thank you. And so to sum up, Madam Deputy Speaker, our constituents care about this matter passionately. Making sure that the way we treat animals reflects who we are as a nation is a priority for the people we are so privileged to represent in this place. It is, I know, a priority for the government too, which is why it has taken strides to elevate our world-leading reputation for animal welfare even further and is wholly committed to supporting the passage of this bill. And may I thank very much the Minister and her officials for their support. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Animal Welfare Sentencing Bill is an important and landmark step in ensuring that we can have an appropriate response to those who inflict deliberate suffering on innocent animals. For far too long, the maximum sentence available has been too short. This bill is of great importance to this House, to the animal welfare community and to the public more widely. We need to get on and we need to sort it out and we need to get this bill on the statute book and that hopefully short journey begins today. Madam Deputy Speaker, I beg to move. Yeah. Yeah.